the last few lessons about how this portion, starting in chapter 10 and all the way through 13, really is a lot of comparisons and contrast between uh, the righteous, those that choose to do right, those that have wisdom, those that uh, seek instruction, and the wicked or the worldly person. Uh, worldly people don't think themselves to be wicked, but when you compare their actions, if you put two columns up, and that's what Christ said, you're either for me or you're against me, you're either righteous or you're wicked, you can't be in between, uh, we'll, we'll see that, that that's pretty much the same uh, comparison. A worldly person is looking for uh, earthly reward, uh, instant reward here, and what benefits them in the life they're living here, and they're more self-centered and selfish people, where a righteous person or one that has wisdom or fears God, he's going to do the right thing, even if it costs him something here, even if it, it takes away and does not reward him instantly with uh, the worldly uh, treasures of this life, he looks towards eternal reward because this life is not the only life. We're working towards heaven. In fact, if we're born again, the, the Bible says that we, we are not of this world anymore. We're pilgrims and wanderers in this world looking for a city like Abraham whose builder and maker is God. And our reward may not come here. Now, there's plenty of blessings that God will bless us here also, but usually it's not the instant reward that the worldly person's looking for uh, right now. And they're looking for what they can do to profit themselves in the world they're living in, and they kind of follow the rule book of the world. You know, the world kind of has uh, a rule book they live by. Used to be that rule book was a lot more leaning towards God, but now... More and more, they want God out of the picture. They want God out of the schoolroom, out of the courtroom, out of the congressional uh, hall, and out of the Supreme Court, even though they have the Ten Commandments uh, 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 permanently engraved in those locations. They really don't want to bring God into the conversation. So I want to be, let's, let's turn, if you will, to uh, Proverbs chapter 10, we're going to hit some of these verses and just look over these as we go through them with some of the comparisons that God uh, has put in his word. Uh, if you follow me in chapter 10, verse 2, the treasures of wickedness profit nothing, but, the, but righteousness delivers from death. The Lord will not suffer the soul of the righteous to famish, but he casteth away the substance of the wicked. Verse 6, Blessings are upon the head of the just, but violence covereth the mouth of the wicked. Verse 9, He that walketh uprightly walketh surely, but he that is perverse in his ways shall be known. Verse 11, The mouth of the righteous man is a well of life, but violence covereth the mouth of the wicked. Verse 14, Wise men lay up knowledge, but the mouth of the foolish is near destruction. Verse 16, the labor of the righteous tendeth to life, but the fruit of the wicked to sin. 17, he is in the way of life that keepeth instruction, but he that refuses reproof erreth. Verse 20, the tongue of the just is a choice silver, the heart of the wicked is little worth. Notice that a lot of times the righteous man is looking for uh, satisfaction in the soul, for him to have peace of mind, peace of heart, peace in his soul, rather than uh, treasures of uh, gold and silver here and there. 
of verse 21, the lips of the righteous feed many, but fools die for want of wisdom. 23, it is a sport to a fool to do mischief, but a man of understanding hath wisdom. The fear of the wicked, it shall come upon him, but the desire of the righteous shall be granted. As the whirlwind passes, so the wicked are no more, but the righteous is an everlasting foundation. 27, uh, the fear of the Lord prolongeth days, but the years of the wicked shall be shortened. 29, the way of the Lord is strength to the upright, but destruction shall be uh, to the workers of iniquity. The righteous shall never be removed. That's eternal reward, never be removed. We have eternal life. But the wicked shall not inhabit the earth. 32, the lips of the righteous know what is acceptable, but the mouth of the wicked speak with, uh, speaketh frowardness. Uh, 11.3, the integrity of the upright shall guide them, but the perverseness of transgressors shall destroy them. Riches profit not in the day of wrath, but righteousness delivereth from death. The righteousness of the perfect shall direct his way, but the wicked shall fall by his own wickedness. The righteousness of the upright shall deliver them, but transgressors shall be taken in their own naughtiness. When a wicked man dieth, his expectation shall perish. He thinks everything dies with him. And uh, the hope of the unjust men perisheth. The righteous is delivered out of trouble, and the wicked cometh in his stead. Uh, verse 10, when it goeth well with the righteous, the city rejoiceth. And when the wicked perish, there is shouting. Governments, we, we are doing a lot of comparison these days in governments, governments that do the right thing, the good thing, and the ones that lie and do the wrong things. And I'll tell you, it would be a great relief when we get a new government in the United States of America than the one that's here. But meanwhile, we'll just pray on. Uh, verse 11, By the blessings of the upright, the city is exalted, but it is overthrown by the mouth of the wicked. He that is void of wisdom despiseth his neighbor, but a man of understanding holdeth his peace. Uh, verse uh, 15, uh, that is, he that is surety for a stranger shall smart for it, and he that hateth surety ship is sure. What's surety ship anyway? Anybody know? That's being a co-signer. Being uh, responsible for someone else's uh, debt. Uh, that's not a wise thing to do. Um, let's see. Verse 17. The merciful man doeth good to his own soul, but he that is cruel troubleth his own flesh. Uh, the wicked worketh a deceitful work, but to him that soweth righteousness shall be a sure reward. As righteousness tendeth to life, so he that pursueth evil pursueth it to his own death. Uh, verse 21, Though hand joined in hand, the wicked shall not be unpunished but the seed of the righteous shall be delivered. I want to stop right there because sometimes our reward will not be to us. It'll be to our children. We'll give them the reward that we sacrifice for. And America used to be built on that. And now the consensus is, well, if you uh, control the government and control the media and control what everybody hears and what everything is said uh, in the media, uh, then you can bring it to pass the way you want to. And God said, though, everybody agree uh, about what to do. If it's the wicked way, 
God's not going to prosper that. They're not going to go unpunished. All these things that are being done by the news medias and government and everything, they're going to pay a price for it one day. may not be in their generation, but it definitely will come in another generation. Amen. Verse 23, the desire of the righteous is only good, but the expectation of the wicked is wrath. Uh, verse 26, he that withholdeth, it, the, hold, withholdeth corn, the people shall curse him, but blessing shall be upon the head of him that selleth it. It's better to share and share alike than to uh, really withhold things to try to make more money, isn't it? Uh, verse 30, the fruit of the righteous is a tree of life, and he that winneth souls is wise. Behold, the righteous shall be recompensed in the earth, but uh, much more the wicked and uh, the sinner. God does see and God does bless. And I'm glad that God's blessing, they bring no sorrow with it, the Bible says. In verse 2 of chapter 12, A good man obtaineth favor of the Lord, but a man of wicked devices will he condemn. A man shall not be established by wickedness, but the root of the righteous shall not be uh, moved. Uh, the th verse 5, the thoughts of the righteous are right, but the counsels of the wicked are deceit. The words of the wicked are to lie and wait for blood, but the mouth of the upright shall deliver them. The wicked are overthrown and are not, but the house of the righteous shall stand. A man shall be commended according to his wisdom, but he that is perverse, uh, of a perverse heart, shall be de despised. Here's, here's one verse I wanted to add into this in the middle. Verse 9, He that is despised and hath a servant is better than he that honoreth himself and lacketh bread. Now, that's the only good thing you can say about a worldly person that's working hard in this world to get all that they can. God said it's better that a worldly person or a wicked person works hard enough that he has a servant than somebody that's so lazy he won't get out there and work and he doesn't have anything. So, so a wicked or a worldly man that's working hard is better than a lazy man that expects everybody else to feed him. And I'll tell you, I like what the Bible says. If they won't work, they shouldn't eat. That's what the law says in the, in the Word of God. In Matthew, uh, Matthew 6, 33 says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, then all these things will be added unto you. Best to be a righteous heart, have a righteous heart, and seek knowledge, seek wisdom, do the right thing. Work hard, serve God, and help others. You may not reap in this life, but there's another life yet to come. And if you'll do that, God will bless you even in this life uh, many, many times. Okay, let's go on. Verse, uh, verse 10 a righteous man regardeth the life of his beast, but the tender mercies of the wicked are cruel. Uh, he that tilleth his land shall ha be satisfied with bread, but he that is, uh, followeth vain persons is void of understanding. Better to have a garden out in your yard than to spend your money on lottery tickets. That's my version. <coughs> Verse 13, the wicked is snared by the transgression of his lips, but the just shall come out of trouble. A man is satisfied with good by the fruit of his mouth and the recompense 
of a man's hand shall be rendered unto him. Verse uh, 17, He that speaketh truth showeth forth righteousness, but a false witness deceit. There is that speaketh like the piercings of a sword, but the tongue of the wise is health. The lips of truth shall be established forever, but a lying tongue is but for a moment. Deceit is in the heart of them that imagine evil, but to the uh, counselors of peace is joy. There is no evil happen to the just, but the wicked shall be filled with mischief. Lying lips are an abomination to the Lord, but uh, they that deal truly are his delight. A prudent man concealeth knowledge, but the heart of fools proclaimeth foolishness. Foolishness. The hands of the diligent bear rule, but the slothful shall be under tribute. Heaviness in the heart of man maketh it stoop, but a good word maketh it glad. That's one reason to go to church three times a week. Tell you, this world will make you sad at heart. And going to church ought to make you glad. Amen? That's why we need fellowship. That's why coming to church is better than sitting home and watching church. You don't get the kind of fellowship at home that you get here. I tell you, the conversation and the buzzing going on before uh, a Sunday school and in between services and everybody talking and, and encouraging one another, that's of great benefit, great benefit to all of us. That's why you need to be in church as often as you can to, to really get the benefit of uh, being there. Let's go to verse uh, 22. Lying lips are an abomination to the Lord, but they that deal truly are his delight. A prudent man concealeth knowledge, but the heart of fools proclaimeth foolishness. Uh, let's go down to verse 26. The righteous is more excellent than his neighbor, but the way of the wicked seduceth them. The slothful man roasteth not that which he took in hunting, but the substance of the diligent man is precious. In the way of righteousness is life, and in the pathway thereof there is no death. I hate to see hunters that go out and kill a big animal and cut the horns off and leave the carcass lay. They ought to at least give it to somebody that will dress it and eat it. I don't like that. that. That hunting for pleasure is not what hunting should be about. It should be for our uh, necessities. And a poor man, his tomatoes, to get the, the worms out of the tomatoes and to save the tomatoes from rotten means more to him than somebody that kills something in hunting or fishing and just leaves it to rot in the field. That's a shame. But people that work for a living, everything they do is precious. They try to save everything they, they can uh, in this life. We see all the contrast in, in, in these uh, chapters we read through, picking a few verses, how much contrast and difference there is in the way they think. The, the Bible said that you should keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Now, I'll tell you, that's where the root of uh, being right or wrong comes from. A man with a heart that wants to be right with God is going to really work at trying to please God and do the right thing even when it costs him something here. Because it may cost us something here to do right, but in the end, we're going to receive a blessing that's going to be eternal reward, not just a temporary reward. 
and those that have a, a, a selfish heart, a wicked heart, a worldly heart that seeks only pleasures of the flesh are going to spend up all their existence and never really gain anything. You know, <clears throat> they go up there and party and drink all that booze and everything else they can drink, and who are they hurting? They hurt themselves. Cirrhosis of the liver, all kinds of diseases comes from alcohol uh, beverages and all the consumption of it. You know, they make, uh, I was listening to Brother Knox, he was talking about uh, how bad the government is, and uh, he said they they want to they want to prevent all this other stuff, but they never want to touch alcohol. I'll tell you, we were better off when they were in prohibition. You know how how great the preachers like Billy Sunday and D. L. Moody and those uh, preachers that were prior to prohibition preached long and hard and went in tent meeting from uh, city to city and they actually co closed down bars in cities and to the point that we not only passed a law, the prohibition was a, a constitutional amendment. You know what that means? They had to get 70% of the vote to change the Constitution. You know why they changed it back? Money. Money. They even created a whole uh, separate organization to take care of it. They uh, added two others in it, tobacco, firearms, and alcohol together. The revenue was, the revenue came from taxes. <laughs> They better add gasoline into it now, I think. <laughs> because gasoline's costing us more than anything else. But we, we see how the rewards of righteousness brings all blessings. It brings health and wealth and pureness of heart and mind. Worldliness, selfishness, and wickedness only brings destruction. And that's why our nation is being destroyed. And it's not destroyed from without. Brother, Brother Knox said that he was up north preaching at a, church, a couple of churches in Rhode Island, and there was two churches up there. Both of them claimed to be the first Baptist church in America. And he went to the one that was, had more uh, class than the other. And he went there and he said they had two poles outside with two flags. One side had the rainbow flag on it. And uh, the other side had an a, a anti-abortion flag of some... Uh, or abortion flag of some sort on it. And uh, they were both bragging about. And I'll tell you, there's very few churches in America going to preach against alcohol in the day we're living in. And uh, it's not the root of all evil, but it's sure you read what it says, and we'll get there pretty soon in Proverbs. It takes away the mind and it takes away the conscience from feeling guilty about sin. That's the worst thing about alcohol and serving alcohol and those things. Well, let's look a little bit in chapter 13 before we leave. In uh, 13, 2, it says, He that keepeth his mouth keepeth his life, but he that open wide his lips shall have destruction. Uh, five, the righteous man hate, hateth lying, but the wicked man is loathsome and cometh to shame. Righteousness keepeth him that is upright in the way, but the wickedness uh, overthroweth the sinner. There is that maketh himself rich, yet hath nothing, 
There is that maketh himself poor, yet hath great riches. The ransom of a man's life or his riches, but, a, but the poor uh, heareth not rebuke. The uh, light of the righteous rejoices, but the lamp of the wicked shall be put out. Only by pride cometh contention, but with the well-advised is wisdom. Wealth gotten by vanity shall be diminished, but he that gathered by labor shall increase. Hope, it, hope deferred maketh the heart sick, but when the desire cometh, it is a tree of life. Uh, 14, he, the law of the wise is a foundation, a fountain of life to depart from the snares of death. Uh, verse 17, a wicked messenger falleth into mischief, but a faithful ambassador is health. Poverty and shame shall be to him that refuseth instruction, but he that regardeth reproof uh, shall be honored. Uh, the desire accomplished is sweet to the soul, but the abomination, it is abomination to fools to depart from evil. He that walketh with wise men shall be wise, but a companion of fools shall be destroyed. Evil pursueth sinners, but to the righteous good shall be repaid. A good man leaveth an inheritance to his children's children, and the wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just. Much food is, is in the tillage of the poor, but there is that uh, that is uh, destroyed for want of judgment. The righteous, verse 25, the righteous eateth to his satisfying of his soul, but the belly of the wicked shall want, never satisfied. What a comparison. Live right, do right. And it starts with getting a heart right. And when we have a choice, do the right thing. Do the right thing. It may not pay today, but it will in the future. It may not help you, but it will help your children. I tell you, we need to pass on a better nation, a better people to our children than we have in America today. We have a, a, a lot of work cut out for us as Americans alone to do right, to be right, to speak right, to stand up and speak up. It might help some others to do the same. i tell you what a comparison. You will never regret in the future doing the right thing today. You might feel it for a while, but God's going to bless you in ways that the world can't. The world can't give you joy and peace and love and uh, respect. I'm just, I, it bothers me in America that the generation coming up has so little self-respect. They don't care how they look, how they dress, how they act, how they talk, how other people might think of them. In fact, it seems like they try to be the most wicked, vilest, foulest mouth people they can to get attention from other people their age group. And you can just take a trip down TikTok or one of those uh, programs that records all that junk, and you'll see what I'm talking about. I don't go there. It bothers me to look. There's some good things on there, but I'll tell you, there's a multitude of evil communications. And this generation's hardly ever take their face out of their phone. We need to really pray for our children and our nation uh, and for 
righteousness. That's why righteousness exalteth a nation. You know what they do in Muslim countries mostly? There's no alcohol allowed, except if you're in the palace, behind closed doors. You know, women have to cover everything but just their eyes to walk around because they want them to be modest and then sell them for slaves on the uh, black market. They, they portray themselves to be righteous with the uh, banning of alcohol and uh, uh, immodest apparel and all that kind of stuff, but down deep, they're wicked. They're wicked. They're following the wrong God. And they're just, they're, they are the most phony, self-righteous people. But America gives them plenty of ammunition because America seemed to brag about wickedness and bad behavior. So it gives them a lot of things to twist the minds of their young people, and that's what happened to America in school systems. But over, over in the Muslim countries, they learn how to sing, I want to be a suicide bomber and in, the, in the kindergarten, what they teach them in some of those places. What a world. I know that God's coming back soon. And uh, I'm like the preacher. I can't wait. I don't see how he could last much longer. So if you have loved ones that are lost, you've got to keep after them. Neighbors and people you know that don't believe, it won't be very long. Let's pray. Father, we thank you today for the contrast and comparison between having a right heart and a right mind and uh, righteousness in our lives and uh, having a selfish and wicked and worldly heart and how much damage and destruction that brings. Help us to work at keeping our heart pure and right with you that we might always be doing the right thing, that we might be a blessing to our, our home and our children and our nation and the world and not add to the uh, destruction and violence in this world. Go with us, we pray. Be with the rest of the services today, I pray, and bless as only you can. In Jesus' name. Amen.